September 14, 2024. Guys, a quick update. We had that large CME that left the sun today. It's headed for our planet, the tail end of it. And what I've got this uh, particular satellite paused on is the 13th. This is Alaska C2. Notice your timestamp. Now, today we had a bottom flare but right there. That was an X4.5, and it wasn't just on the edge of the sun. It was turning around facing us, but not directly. So we're getting, again, the tail end of it. Same satellite, wider camera angle, Alaska C3. Again, 12th, you notice your timestamp, and you get into the 13th, we start to see the activity pick up. Going into the 14th, you're going to see, again, a bottom corner flare, then that X4.5. Now, because it wasn't directly Earth-facing, we're not going to get the center part of the CME, but the tail of it may be part of the strongest uh, section. And this says it's radiation from the flare ionized the top of the Earth's atmosphere, resulting in a deep shortwave radio blackout over South America and the Mid-Atlantic Ocean. Ham radio operators and mariners may have noticed loss of signal at frequencies below 30 megahertz for as much as 30 minutes. CME is emerging from the blast site, but it's too soon to say whether it has an Earth-directed component. Now the models are out since that article, but it was an X4.5. Notice right there. And a quick look at the models. I've got it paused at 1,800 hours today. That's UTC time, the 14th. The sun is the white dot in the center. The Earth is to the right in the yellow dot. Now, right here, we're going to stop this thing as it comes out, moving very fast. It's already encountered Earth, but this is where I paused it. So at uh, six, 0600 hours on the 16th, that's 1 a.m. in the morning, tomorrow night after midnight. In the central time, it's midnight. Now, this impact looks like, again, I had to stop it there, but that we could start seeing the impacts as early as 10.30 or 11 through that uh, two or three hour span. Something to, uh, important to note, this is stereo ahead. It gives us a really good Earth-facing uh, perspective. Now, the flare was not directly Earth-facing or the sunspot where the flare came from, but the strongest energy is in the tail end, which is at the bottom, looking down through there. You see that very bright area, and that's the area that's going to sweep across our planet. So we may have a stronger impact than some of the other areas and the other satellites, but right there again, that's the tail end of the CME model you just saw in the stronger section. So you, we, uh, we know that people start uh, having effects, dizziness and things like that. I do it and a bunch of people in the comments will say they do too. And I'm gonna put a list at the end of this guys that shows, uh, it gives you a link and it talks about some of the things and you can go to spaceweather.com and check that out. Now let's move to the SDO, again, Earth-facing perspective. Look to your left side. That's the 14th. Here comes the X flare right there, and it was almost a double flare, it looks like, because the flare lasted a long time, and you can see actually two images of the uh, X imprint on the cameras. That's what you're seeing. It's overloading the cameras on the satellite right there. Again, looks like two flares back-to-back -back or out of the same system. But what they're saying about this, and People ask, well, why is, does it matter? One thing is these things can cause earthquakes and volcanic reactions. But they're saying that cosmic rays are surprisingly down to Earth. It's a form of space weather. They can alter the chemistry of the atmosphere, triggering lightning, penetrate commercial airlines. According to a study from the Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health, crews of aircraft have higher rates of cancer than the general population. Now, how much do you fly? Are you a frequent flyer? It says the researchers listed cosmic rays, irregular sleep habits, and chemical contaminants as leading risk factors. A number of con controversial studies, and it lists four there. And if you go to spaceweather.com, scroll all the way to the bottom of the page, you can click on those and it gives you four different studies. But they go even further and it says they link cosmic rays with cardiac arrhythmus and sudden cardiac death and uh, I've noticed it today guys and a little more sensitive than I used to be but I'd like to hear in the comments have you noticed any difference in your dizziness ability to concentrate things like that today because the studies have proven that that happens but we're watching it guys you watch it again spaceweather.com I'll link it in the comments 
scroll to the bottom of the page if you're interested and read these four studies. We're watching it. You watch it. It's a heads up. Be safe.